Hey, I'm Lee Waller and welcome to Motion Media Design. Today I'm going to take a look at taking logos similar to this and making them into 3D objects in Cinema 4D. To do that, we're going to use Illustrator to create some path information from this logo and a little bit later this logo here and we're going to merge that into Cinema 4D so that we can then take that information and extrude it. This method will work well with these two types of logos because they're made up of solid colors. If you have a logo that has a lot of gradients or highlights, this method's not going to work well because it generates way too much path information and it's hard to get these types of designs. So let's take a look at it. I've opened up the logo in Illustrator and the workspace that I'm working in, if you want to follow along, is the Essentials Classic. Selecting this logo here, I'm going to jump up to where it says Image Trace right there. I'm going to click on it and choose Low Fidelity Photo. Illustrator is going to scan this and then once it's done, we'll have the option over here to expand this. We can click on it and once that has expanded, you will see that it has created some path information for us. This information right here is what we're going to take into Cinema 4D. It's going to be recognized as a spline and then we can extrude that information. Now on this particular logo, I don't need this white background. So over here in my layers panel in Illustrator, I'm going to open up this layer one. I'm going to go to this bottom path here and delete it. And when I go into Cinema 4D, I can recreate this circle using a cylinder. What I really need is for this W path here to be closed. So I'm going to go around using my direct selection tool right here. I'm going to go around this path to these anchor points and I'm going to delete them one at a time on this circle part. So that when I come back and finish at the top, we'll be close to closing out the W. I do have one more hanging on in there, so I'm going to zoom in to that, select that, and delete it. I'm going to zoom back out now. And what I need to do is select this anchor point and this anchor point and join them so that we can close this. Select that, and now I'm going to shift, select that one. I'm going to come up here to Object and go to Path, Join. I need to get this into Cinema 4D as an Adobe Illustrator file. So I need to save it. Go to File, Save, and I'm just going to label this W and hit Save. Now, when this Illustrator Options box comes open, we need to make a version change. Illustrator 8 allows us to save this path information and then merge it into Cinema 4D. So make sure that you choose Illustrator 8 right there and then hit OK. So at this point, we're done in Illustrator and I'm going to jump over into Cinema 4D with a new project open. I'm going to go up to File, Merge Project, and navigate to that Illustrator file that I just created. Double click on it. Here's our import options. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up by 10 and make sure that the connect splines is selected and hit OK. So there's our W. Before we go further, I want to come into the coordinates for that spline now and I want to zero out the X and the Y. That just helps center up that spline, make it a little bit easier as we move through this. Now all I need to do is extrude this spline, select the extrude generator, and grab that W spline and drag it in, make it a child of the extrude, and there's our W. Now I still want to create that circle with the logo. To do that, I want to see that logo and be able to compare it to the original logo. I'm going to go to my front view, click right here, and here is my front view, and I'm going to click right here so that I make that full screen. 
and I'm going to drop in the original logo on the background here so that we can see it. So I'm going to go to Options, Configure, and over here in our Attributes tab, you'll see that it says Back, select that, and then we have the option to put an image in. Let's select right there and get that original W logo. And there is our original compared to the spline that we've created. I do have the option on making this original logo a little bit transparent. So I'm going to bring that down so that I can see this a little bit better. And now I need to adjust the logo. Start sizing it down so that we start getting real close. And then offset. And now I can zoom in and take a look at this little area right here and see if I can clean this up some. I want to make some adjustments right here in this area. To do that, first thing I'm going to do is click the extrude off and make sure that I can select the spline. And with the move tool selected, I can come in here, hover over that point and adjust it slightly. Zoom in if you really want to get close on that. and then do the same for this point down here. I do want to put a little bit of an arc in this line to try to match up the curvature of the circle. I'm going to select the pen tool there and I'm going to hover in this area right here in the center and you'll see that I can begin to push that. And I also get some handles. Let's see how that turns out. Click right here and, and then grab that handle right there, drag it down just a little bit. We can come down here to this one, select it, grab that handle, bring it in just to kind of create that curvature right there. And we'll see how that looks. Let me drag that up just a little bit. Let me get my move tool. All right, once you're satisfied with that curvature, we can back out of this. And from here, we can go ahead and drop in the cylinder to create this circle here. I'm going to come up here to the cube, click on it, hold it down, come over and get the cylinder. The cylinder is not oriented correctly. So with that cylinder selected in our Objects tab, come to the Objects tab in the Attributes panel. Select Orientation and let's hit plus Z for that. I'm going to increase the radius and keep pushing that up until I kind of match up the outside of the original circle. And then at the coordinates, you can bring that down. And it looks like we need to bump it over to the right just a little bit. And now we can go back into our perspective view. There's our cylinder. Have a few more adjustments we need to make. So again, with the cylinder selected here in the Objects tab, let's go to the Objects tab right here. I'm going to increase the rotation segments up to, uh, let's say, 130. Make that nice and smooth. And of course, I need to bring the height down quite a bit. I'll go ahead and bring that down to 20. And I do need to turn the extrude back on for the W. I can zoom around this and you'll see there's that W on the back. So I'm going to select the cylinder and under coordinates, I'm going to push that back in Z space. Maybe, it just depends on what you how, how you want this to look. Uh, maybe 20 centimeters there. And we can kind of zoom around and take a look at it. Now to create some materials for this and put some color on it. I'm going to come down here, create new default material. Just double click that real quick, make that completely white, hit OK. I can drop that onto the W and then I'm going to duplicate this by holding the control key, dragging over. I'm going to open that up, make this red. 
and now drop that red on the rest of it. So now there's that logo that was once just a flat 2D object. We've now extruded it and made it into a 3D object. So now I want to take a look at this logo here. This has a little bit more information in it and it's going to generate a lot more paths. Just like we did with the first one, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to come up here to Image Trace and drop down and go to Low Fidelity Photo. I'm going to click on that one and let Illustrator do the work. Once it's done, I can come over here and click the Expand button. Now it has generated all of these different paths for us. We can come to our Layer Panel, open that up, and take a look at all of the different paths it has generated. This bottom path here, we're not going to need it, this black background. So we can select it and trash it. And then we're going to take a look at a few of the other paths that we need to work with. The A here, the A here, and the R here. We need to do just a little bit of work with these three letters so that these paths come in correctly. I'm going to hide this red path for right now so that we don't see that. But what I need to do is, this is made up of two paths. You can see the, the center path that it's made up of and then the outer path of it. I'll zoom in and take a look at, closer look at that. So there's that path that we need to cut out. And then there's the rest of the A. I'm going to select both of these. With both of them selected, I'm going to right click and go to Make Compound Path. Going to move over now to my other A, do the same thing, select both of them, right click, make compound path, and then go to the R, do the exact same thing, make compound path. Zoom out. Now this is ready for us to save it as the version 8 Illustrator file and then merge it into Cinema 4D. So file, save, title it. Hit save. And right here in our options, Illustrator, I'm going to jump down to Illustrator 8. Very important step there. And hit OK. Now we can go into Cinema 4D. I'm going to start a new project. And I'm going to merge this in. There's that Illustrator file and scale. This time I want to deselect connect splines. I do not want the splines to be connected and we'll hit OK. Before I move on, I want to jump into the coordinates for this and just kind of zero this up a little bit. Help us see it. And there is our set of splines. You'll see visual varmints right there. We're going to open that up. And here are all the paths that has been generated by Illustrator and has now been merged into this project. There are three groups, and those are those three letters that we worked on, the, a, the two A's and the R. And we will have to work with those a little bit differently in just a few moments. I want to build the face here first. So I'm just going to deselect. Uh, all of these paths that I don't need right now. And that will leave me with just those three letters there that are groups and then the facial splines right here. I'm going to take a look back at the original and see how we can group some of these. So the white eye pieces here we can group, then the red eyeballs, and then the white pupils here. We can group those into sections. So let me jump back into Cinema 4D. And I have that pupil selected and there's the other pupil. So those two together, what I can do is select both of them, come up here to the extrude and then hold down Control Alt. And that drops both of those into an extrude 
But I need to go to that extrude and in the settings for it, under object, I need to click this hierarchical option so that it will extrude both of the splines. Whenever there are multiple splines under an extrusion there, you will need to select that so that it will, and we're gonna do that multiple times in this project. So I'm gonna label that pupils and close that up. I'm gonna skip group four and three right there. And let's see, that is that top V and then that bottom V, we can, we can group those two together. So I'm gonna select both of them again. And I'm gonna come up here to the extrude. And before I select it, I'm gonna hold down Control and Alt or Command and Alt on the Mac and select that. Again, it wraps those two up into that extrusion. And just like before, we need to select Hierarchical. And we can label that VV. And we can continue the process. So now here are the two eyeballs. Select both of those, go up to the extrusion, hold down Control Alt, drop those in, select Hierarchical. And look for our next two, 15 and 14 there, select those just like we've done. And I can label those eyes. Select that, close it up. All right, and take a look at what we have now. We are left with our text. I'm going to go ahead and work on these three letters here because they're going to take just a little bit of work to create them the way we need to. We can open up one of the groups and you can see the two paths that are in there. I'm going to zoom in on this so we get a good idea of what we're doing. This path 20 right here is the outer part of the R and the path 21 is the inner part of the R. We're gonna extrude both of these. Then we're gonna use this path 21 extrusion to cut a hole into this path 20. We're gonna use a generator called a bool to do that. But first, let's go ahead and extrude both of these. I'm gonna select both of them and then I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and select Extrude. This time what it does is it makes both of them an extrusion by themselves. You can see there is the outer part of the R and then there is the inner part of the R. The way that this is going to cut is this inner part actually needs to be deeper than the R is. So I'm going to increase the depth of this extrusion right here uh, just to be on the safe side by about four centimeters. And I'm going to bring it forward by about two centimeters. Now you can see we have plenty of geometry of this centerpiece pushing past the R. And if we scrub around, you can see that on the other side also. So this will cut very easily. Now we need to get the bull and drop these two extrusions into it. I'm just gonna close those up. Here's those two extrusions that we need. And I'm gonna select both of them, just like they are. And I'm gonna come up here to the subdivision surface, click and hold on it, and then go to bull. And before I click on it, hold down Control and Alt. And that drops both of those into that bull in the order that we need them. This top one is the R, and then this bottom one is the center piece that we're using to cut with. So the piece that you want to cut into always needs to be on top in the hierarchy of the bull, and then the one that you're using to cut with will be the bottom piece. So I'm going to label this R. Close that up and go ahead and, and drag that and go ahead and drag that down to the bottom here so that I have it out of the way and I can get rid of that group two now. And I'm gonna do that one more time just to kind of go through this process. I could speed this up, but I wanna go over this process one more time. 
So I'm going to open up these two. Again, there's my A, the outer part of the A, and then there's that center piece that we want to cut with. So I'm going to select both of these, and I'm going to extrude both of them separately. So I need to come up here to the Extrude, and before I do that, hold down the Alt key, click the Extrude, and you'll notice now that that makes each of these paths a child of their own extrude. This bottom extrude, let's go ahead and expand that out by about four centimeters and then go to coordinates and drop it backwards by about two centimeters. You'll see that it is expanded beyond the A and we can select both of these now and come up here to our subdivision surface Click and hold down on it. Come over to Bool. Before we do that, hold the Control and Alt key. And it creates our cut for us. Makes both of those a child of the Bool. We can go ahead and label that A. Close it up. Drag that out down here. Get rid of our Group 3. And we'll do that one more time for Group 4. Select both of them. Come up here to the extrude. Before I click the extrude, hold down the Alt key. That makes both of them an extruded object. Come down to the bottom one. Go to the object, increase that by about four centimeters, and then bring it forward in Z space by about two. And then I'm gonna select both of those extrusions. Come up here to Subdivision surface, go over to Bool, and before I click on it, hold down my Control and Alt, and there is our second A there. We'll label that also A, and I can close that up, drag that out, and drop it down here, and get rid of that group four. So we have those three letters now taken care of. We have a lot of our face built. Now we need to go to the rest of our text here and extrude it. These top two, let's turn all of these back on so we can see them now. These top two are the circles. So we're not gonna use those right at the moment. So let's start with path three and move down to path 13, select all of those. Come over here to the extrude object, hold down your control and alt key or command alt key and click on that extrusion. That makes all of those a child of this extrusion, but on that extrusion, we need to select hierarchical. That way, all of them will extrude. We can close this up and label this text. And now we'll work on the two circles that we have there, path one and path two. We can select both of them, come over here to the extrude, hold down Alt key and click, and that makes both of them a child of their own extrusion so that we can have control over each of them separately. And we can label this one outer ring and label the next one inner ring. Close those two up and now we can start putting some color to this. We're definitely gonna need to move these two rings back in Z space. So I'm gonna select both of them, go to coordinates and push those backwards in Z space. Maybe about, uh, let's try 20 for right now, 20 centimeters. You'll see that the rest of our text and uh, objects have shown up. I'm gonna organize this a little bit and bring my text down here with the rest of my letters. And there are my facial features right there. So let's create some materials for this. I'm going to go new material. Double click on that. This will be our white one. Come down here, hold command, control, drag that over. Double click on the next one. This one can be black. One more time for red. And. There we have our red color and we can start dropping these on. So black for our inner circle here, red for our outer circle right there. 
these eyes right here are going to be white. The pupils will be black. And then this part of it will be red. And then we also need our two V's there. Let's take a quick look. I know we're going to need to make some adjustments. All right, so we're going to need to push this inner ring forward just a little bit. So we can bring that back um, maybe about four centimeters. And we need to put a color on that. That was supposed to be black. And then also the pupils there are going to need to push forward just a little bit. So let's bring those forward just a tiny bit. And so we also need a material on our text. Let's see, just click and drag those with command. And we've got materials on all of them. Let's see. So there we are. We can do a few more things to this. Uh, let's drop a light in and I'll bring that light out and we can then we can come up here to our render settings and click effect and drop in ambient occlusion. Let's set that to enable cache and then also on our light we can go to shadow set that to shadow map soft and just bring that down maybe to 50% and then let's render it. See. If you want to adjust the depth of any of these or the distance of any of these, I'm going to bring back the visual varmints just a little bit, the text. So I'm going to select all of that right there and go to my coordinates and we will push that back just a little bit. Take a look at that. All right, I went ahead and grouped some things in this and dropped it into After Effects, put a background on it, and animated it in Cinema 4D, and then brought that into After Effects. You're looking at the project here in After Effects. And uh, again, um, grouped all of this together as one object and then grouped this background object together. Put a camera in there and animated the camera also so we'll take a look at that in cinema 4d play that out put a light on and then also ambient occlusion and some shadows and of course we're not getting that render right now but i'll hold that and let it render and so there's the final project I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. For more in-depth look at motion media design, check out my other tutorials.